Well, <laughs> welcome to the Geyserville Christian Church and to the Church of the Open Door in Ukiah. Well, we're here for yet one more Sunday service that we're doing together. We're, I think we're going to do this every other week, so it's going to be fun, different. Um, so welcome, and let us pray. Holy God, thank you for this place, this space, for this time. Bless us as we do this service. Bless all who watch and listen. Just be with us, and as we're in various stages of recovering from this fire, bless us, give us heart, give us hope. Amen. Amen. So we're going to turn to number one in your little book. I believe in the Lord. I believe in the Lord. I believe in his word. I believe that he's coming back again. I believe that he's changing me to be as I should be. I see his love all around me every day. I believe. announcements to make. Um, well, the Geyserville Christian Church has a website. It's geyservillechristianchurch.weeble.com, weebly.com. And you can go to Facebook and search for the Geyserville Christian Church and find us there. And, um, or, and please, if you feel like it, subscribe to our YouTube site, and I will ask at this moment that um, offering is important for the continuation of these videos and the continuation of this little church so that when the COVID-19 thing is over, we can all have a place to get back to. So please find ways to uh, make contributions. And at the end of this, for both Sherry and me, there'll be a block that will tell you or to send your gifts. Yes, as he said, it's our contact information is at the end of this video. So if you'd like to make a donation or if you'd like to ask questions or for any reason, that's how you can contact us. It's all there. Also, um, I had another reason and now I've lost it entirely in that sentence. Huh. So <clears throat> I'll, I'll figure it out in a minute here. It will happen. Oh yes, I just got it already again. Uh, it would be lovely if you would subscribe to our YouTubes, either Ukiah's Alone, Geyserville's Alone, or the ones we do all together, or all three. That way you'll be notified whenever a new one comes up. And those subscriptions are growing. At one point, you know, we had just a couple and now there's many. So thank you so much for following us and, and caring. Next is Prayers of the People. And Today, just special prayers. There are some folks that have been allowed to go back to their homes after these fires. And there are people who are still not able to go home. And there are people who have no homes anymore to go back to. 
who have lost ranches and farms and grapes, whole, whole farms, 80 acres of grapes, lost their, lost their livestock. So pray for these people. Hold us all in this, I mean, whole California in your prayers for the fires. So let us continue. Do you have prayers? No, except continuing prayers for my church people, <clears throat> as always. So let us turn to number 148, and I will pray. Holy God, thank you for your love, your care, your support. Thank you for healing and for courage. I ask you now to bless each and every one of us, those of us who are sick, who know people who are sick. Bless our nation right now that is very sick. Heal this people, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Number 148. There is love in the past and love that
human beings love rules. We just love them. No, we don't love them. Well then, why do we have so many of them? At any point in our lives, we have literally hundreds of rules telling us what to do, who to be, how to be. It's as if we're terrified that without all those rules written out for us, we'll get everything wrong. Could it be possible that we don't really need all those rules? In the Old Testament, God gave Moses 10 commandments to give the people, just 10. But that wasn't good enough for the people who need to control and pin down and legislate every emotion, every action. And so the Holiness Code came into being. If you've never heard of the Holiness Code, lucky you, but I'm sure you have. You can find it in Leviticus, chapters 17 through 26, I believe. And it is some of the most boring reading to be found in the entire Bible, I will warn you in advance. But it legislates and details what you can eat, what you can wear, who you can associate with, what you can put on your body, what you can do with your hair, how you can make a living, how many animals you can have, what kinds of animals you can have, it just goes on and on and on and on with rules. Later on, when Jesus was asked about which of the commandments was the greatest, he boiled it down to just two. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. That was number one and love your neighbor as yourself was the second. He explained that all of those other commandments were held within those two. Still later, when St. Paul was trying to explain to the people of Rome the difference that living with the Spirit of Christ in them made to a person, he listed the characteristics that define a true follower of Jesus. It's another list of rules. And this comes from Romans, the 12th chapter. It begins, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection outdo one another in showing honor. Be ardent in spirit as you serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not think yourself superior, but associate with all. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. And finally, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with everyone. Now again, these are all good rules, perfectly good rules. They tell us to live in good ways. And yet, couldn't they just as well all be contained within the first let love be genuine. If our love is genuine, if we truly love God and all of our brothers and sisters, all of our brothers and sisters, and if we truly strive to treat each other, every other, with love and respect, 
How could we not include all the other rules without always having to parse them out separately? Why must we continually overthink this point? In the words of Lynn manuel Miranda, love is love, is love, is love, is love. So, I have a friend, and he is an incredible musician, great songwriter, and when we go to open mics, somehow or another, I always end up following him. Well, that's kind of how I feel today, you know, following one of Sherry's sermons is always an undertaking, because she does so well at it. But I have just one question. Aren't you just tired of being afraid? Aren't you just tired of hating, of disliking, of judging? Aren't you tired of that? Hey, America, aren't you tired of that? Hey, people of my church, aren't you tired of that? Aren't you tired of looking at people and being afraid of them? Aren't you tired of wondering? Looking at the riots, looking at actions by authorities, listening to people in power talking. Aren't you just tired? Tired of hating? Tired of hurting? Tired of judging people as, well, maybe they're going to take something from me or maybe they're going to hurt me? I was thinking about this last night and it came to me. I had a friend years and years ago now I was making a dollar an hour, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And it seemed like a lot of money to me. And this friend, I was talking to him and he was just livid at the government because he had to pay $5,000 in taxes. And I turned around to him and I says, whoa, well what about how much you get to keep? Oh well, you know, but, and I've always thought of my taxes as being the way I can help everybody. And there's some people who think of their taxes as just the ways government is stealing it from them. Aren't you tired of that? Wouldn't you rather just love and let, let what you have be used to help people? Wouldn't you rather just not make judgments about political parties and human beings and all of that? You know that song we sang before this? Unconditional love. Yeah, there's a woman in my church, Bev Pillsbury, and she walked up to me after a service one day and says, you know, you write songs all the time. I'd like to hear a song about unconditional love. Well, I hadn't thought about actually writing a song about that, and that's how this song came about. You know, Jesus will give love that can heal, love that goes out of its way. And understand this, with the seal that is his, it is love that won't go away. Think about that. You know, it isn't that we want God to love us, it's that God wants us to love us. Loving. Wouldn't need those rules. Man, there's a lot of rules. That's lots of rules. Man, there's too many rules for me to keep track of. The only rule that you really need to keep track of is love. As a commandment, love. As an action, love. As a noun, love. Do it. You don't need rules if you can love. You don't need to be told not to do this or to do that or to do something else if you can love because loving is all you need to do. Approach everything with love. I had to give a lecture one time and I was terrified. And someone says, you know what I do when I get up to stand there and you know there's a few hundred people in front of me? I says, no, what? And he says, well, I just look at them all and I think, I really love all you people. He says, how can you be afraid of people you love? So let's turn to number 14 and sing this song to the people you have chosen not to love. 
Sing this song to the people that you're challenged by. People you may have said, I really hate those people. Or, you know, anyone that's out there doing something you don't like, that you've decided that you don't like it so much you could hate it. Sing this song to them. Sing it to yourself. I love you with the love of my We uh, work things out ahead of time, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Jesus took bread. Bread is an amazing symbol. It stands for what's called, wheat is called the staff of life, and bread is a product of wheat. It's also the work of human hands. It's also a sus. A, a substance of sustenance for us. I'll try to say that again, I couldn't. At that last supper, at that table Jesus sat at, that Seder meal celebrating the salvation history of the Hebrew people, Jesus took bread. Now, that had been done for thousands of years, but this time Jesus took the bread and when he broke it, he said words that had never been heard before. He said, he said, this is me, my body. It's broken for you and for all. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of your salvation history, your history with me. The times that I have stepped into your life to change it. Do this. And remember me. Jesus was being persecuted and would ultimately, the next day, be killed by the people who did not understand loving, who only understood the rules. And he challenged their rules continually. And that's why they hated him. That's why they wanted to be rid of him. And yet when he gave us this gift, its gift is a gift of love. And he took the cup and he said, this cup is the cup of my blood, my heart, my love for you. This is all my love for you, poured out 
freely and given for you. So take it now and drink it and share it with each other. This is the blood of our Lord Jesus. Take and drink, he says, and remember. Remember me. Holy God, thank you for this meal. Thank you for this food, this spiritual nourishing food that we normally eat at our own tables. But today we eat to nourish our spirits, heal our hearts. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So let us turn to number 231. Number 231. I'm feasting at his banqueting table, his banner over me is love. I'm feasting at his banqueting table, his banner over me is love. I'm feasting at his banqueting table. Open Door in Ukiah, we have for quite a while now finished our service by reciting the Lord's Prayer together. We join hands and we stand in a circle, which is hard to do when there's only the two of us in the studio, but, and we recite this prayer because it's the most commonly known prayer among Christians everywhere. And we feel that when we say this prayer, using whatever form you choose, whatever words you're most comfortable with, we are praying with other Christians, other believers everywhere. So please join us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now go in peace. Go in peace, go in love. Just love. In Jesus' name.